come standing at the top of our mats actually. And then step back about a foot, bring your big toes together, heels slightly apart, slight bend in the knees. Eyes closed. Let's take a few deep, long breaths, connecting to that Ujjayi breath. So you can just hum along as we do this mantra, it's kind of complicated, I barely have it memorized. <laughs> Let's bring our palms to heart center, inhale, Vande Garanam Charana Vinde Sanda Sita Svatma Sukhava Bode Nisreya Se Chakalika Yamane Samsara Hala Hala Moha Shanche Abahu Pu Chakram Sancha Chakra Sri Dharanam Sahasra Siya Samsvitam Pranami Pitanjalim and then Om. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's really far away. I I've been practicing it for a while and I don't have it memorized yet because it's like eh, really long and complicated. So let's you can inhale, look up, exhale, fold forward from the hips, touch the earth if you can, inhale, flat back, exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back, upward or upward plank, chaturanga, and then lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward dog, tailbone to the sky. Now coming all the way up, there you go. Make yourself into a triangle, just breathing. Step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, center line. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms. Step or hop back, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Yeah, because it's easier. <laughs> breathe deep. Step or hop to the front. Flat back. Fold. Gather the arms up overhead. Center line. Two breaths. Look up, exhale, fold, inhale, flat back, exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back, lower down, inhale, chest and head come up, chatter on, up dog, exhale, downward dog. Up to the front of the mat. This time we're going to keep the butt sinking down. Arms go up, coming halfway up to chair. Utkatasana. Utkatasana. Inhale up. Exhale. Arms out to the sides. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms. Step or hop back, lower down. Up dog, inhale. Exhale, down dog. Bring the right foot up. 
And on an exhale, step it through towards the front of the mat and come up. High lunge. Then plant the palms. Step back, lower down. Up dog. Down dog. Lift the left leg up. Step it through. Coming up. Stack that front knee and ankle. You can be back up on the big or the toes of the back leg. Fold, planting the palms. Chaturanga, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Hop to the front of the mat. Uh, come into chair. Inhale up. Exhale, arms out to the sides. Shake the arms out. Shake the legs out. Now we're going to be doing a series of standing poses where we'll step one foot back, pivot that way, do the pose on that side, and we just pivot the other way to do the reverse, okay? <coughs> so step the right foot back, turn towards that edge of the mat, beautiful. The back foot should be about pointing at the upper corner of the mat. Doing Trikonasaka triangle pose. So actually for this first bit, your hips are open more towards the long edge of the mat. Arms come out to the sides. And then on an exhale, fold over that front leg, really extending into the side body, keeping a set uplift of the rib cage. gaze and then come up, pivot around to the other side. So again, hips are open towards the long edge of the mat. Yep. Arms out to the side. Inhale. Exhale, fold over that front leg. The arms kind of stay in a long line. The heart is open. stance a little bit, bring your hands to your hips, hips are parallel to the short edge of the mat, keep your right hand on the right hip, inhale, left arm goes up, exhale, start to fold and twist to the right. So we're not really going to the right, we're just twisting the upper body and folding forward to a twisted triangle, and then your opposite arm can go up, so it's like, yeah. It's really awkward at first, so just make sure that you're not yeah. forcing anything. I'm just fine. Uh, I've had balance. So I'm working there. Inhale, come up. Just pivot it around. Bring your hands to the hips, parallel to the short edge. Keep the left hand on the left hip. Inhale, right arm goes up. Exhale, fold towards the left, twisting. And then just go as far as you can comfortably. Shaking this just means we're challenging ourselves. Inhale, come up. Pivot around. Turn. We'll stack that front knee and ankle. Step the back foot back a little bit. And then that foot is kind of at a 45 degree angle. Inhale, the left arm goes up. Exhale, start to fold into that opening, that side body. And you can either bring your right uh, 
elbow to the thigh or even all the way down to the ground if that's available. But usually we start up on the thigh and just really work on feeling that extension from pinky toe to pinky. Slowly, just pivot around, stack the front knee and knee and ankle, and then inhale that right arm goes up, exhale, fold over as far as you can comfortably, just feeling that extension of the side body. <clears throat> Look easy. <laughs> and hands at heart center. Inhale, look up. Exhale, twist. Keep a wide stance. You can either let the toes splay out or in a little bit. Just check in whatever like, releases your legs better. And then inhale, look up, gather the arms up overhead. Exhale, swan dive, folding forward from the hips. If you can, bring your hands all the way to the ground with your back still in alignment. If you can, just go to where you can and breathe. here. Inhale, coming up halfway, interlacing your hands behind your back. And just bring your hands to the kidneys and then fold. down and grab your big toes and then they actually show the top of the head being on the ground here but that's may not be available <laughs> just breathe postures which it can help the balance to step off the mat because having anything squishy underneath us just makes it a little bit harder so start by really focusing on your left foot and grounding it and then lift the right foot up you can stare at the ground about five feet in front of you and then grab behind the right thigh point the foot away or if you can reach out grab your big toe They 
show in the pictures, like pulling it all the nose, the knee all the way up to the nose. It's like, yeah, someday, maybe. Yeah, I want to start practicing it, like just the stretching at least every day. And then pull it up to the side. Cause I like, I do other breathing exercises, but yeah, it's getting... hard to remember. Right, stretches. Yeah. I need a book. I need to get a book. That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah, we can talk about that. Structure, you just did it. <laughs> and then we bring it back forward, release the hands, and we keep the leg up, just pointing the toe away. And release. Walk the feet out a few times. It ain't easy. No. <laughs> I try to do stuff like this the gym, like just sitting and like doing a chair pose and stuff. <laughs> Especially with gymming, you need to like, yin is probably the best thing for you. I think what we did last time yeah. is because if you get into yang exercises, doing the yin poses will be better for your joints at least. Yeah. So now we're going to press our weight into our right foot. Just find a point to fix your gaze about five feet out and lift the left leg up reach behind the thigh. You may notice one side goes up easier than the other, and it's pretty natural. Pull that leg out to the side. You can extend the opposite arm and look that direction. Sides, 
stepping to the front of the mat. And step the right foot back. Set ourselves up for warrior one. So front knee and equal step. Hips parallel to the short edge of the mat. Step it back a bit. And then inhale, both arms go up. Looking up. the arms, and just pivot around, hips parallel to the short edge again, inhale, arms go up, and we're going to open out towards the long edge of the mat with the hips and the arms, warrior two, palms up, Staying facing this way. And then arms stay up, we're just reversing. Stepping that front knee and ankle. Starting with Dandasana, staff pose, so legs out, long hands beside your hips. Just as you inhale, feel the spine elongate. Exhale, just feel yourself relaxing, creating length. Exhale, fold forward from the navel center. If you can, grab your big toes. Press first two fingers, wrap around the big toe. Thumb presses into the big toenails. Just Paschimottanasana A. Breathe. Gaze can be at the legs or the toes. Straighten the back, and then exhale, grab the outsides of your feet, fold, you can have a bend in the knees if necessary, you gotta protect the knees, if you ever start to feel twinges there, those little twinges turn into expensive surgeries. And inhale, flat back. Exhale if you can. We reach around and grab opposite wrists from the feet, but if that's not available, just take a modification. So I know I certainly cannot do that today. <laughs> oh, whenever you do like this? No, it's like grabbing your, reaching under the feet and grabbing your wrists, like down here. Oh, I can't even no, really do it with my knees bent right now. <laughs> come up, bring our hands under our shoulders, fingers can point away, and then pressing our hips towards the sky, just doing a reverse plank, breathing. Yeah, yeah, you do whatever you need to do to modify, it's always kind of a Finding what's comfortable for your body, especially with anything holding yourself up. And lower down. And one more time, inhale up. And release. Ardha, Bada, Padma, Paschimottanasana. So, yeah, that is the 
We're coming into Half Lotus, so bring your right. You can either um, bring it in and kind of sit on the heel, or if you can lock it over that opposite hip, just check in there. If that hurts your knee, don't do it at all. If that's comfortable, great. Then we're gonna inhale up, exhale, fold over that outstretched leg, and if you can grab the sides of your feet, grab the big toe, grab behind the, the calf, whatever works, just breathe. the opposite of yin with the yin we're holding for three to five minutes with this we're holding five breaths yeah. <laughs> and inhale up exhale fold you notice one side is significantly tighter than the other this is fairly natural in the beginning outside of the hip with the top of the foot pressing into the ground. If this hurts, you can always bring a bolster underneath your bum. That'll lift you up and just take the pressure off of the knee. This is Triang Mukha Eka Pada Paschimottanasana. Paschimottanasana is forward fold, I believe. So inhale and exhale, fold. And again, just find whatever forward fold comes natural. one side it's really easy to be down here and on the other side it isn't but if you know that you have a bad knee it's always good to protect that one and just be extra cautious so we'll inhale up exhale fold Very similar to a half butterfly, just pressing into the inner thigh, and you can kind of have your heel right at your perineum, so between your anus and sex organs. This helps stimulate the first chakra. Then inhale up, exhale, fold forward over that outstretched legs. Switching legs, this time we're actually going to sit on that heel. And then folding forward. Inhale up. And switching. It's like if you really need a hamstring stretch, <laughs> this is the place to go. Oh, I need it for sure. So sitting on that opposite heel, just bring it under the bum and folding forward. Up. Exhale, release 
releasing that leg. And Jack or Josh in a three is weird. I can, or B is weird. C, I can barely do it. So you're trying to like twist your leg and get your toes pointing on the ground right in front of your groin, right? Okay. I read it. Which one? That is what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Which it's kind of one of those things. If it doesn't come natural at all, just kind of like work towards it because <laughs> it's very awkward at first. <laughs> yeah, it's good enough. We'll just breathe there. Chances are this is your edge. <laughs> Switch. So it's like I grab my heel and kind of like pull it up towards the groin and press my toes into the ground. But it's like it's kind of it's not that flexible yet. Yeah, no, it's it's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that flexible yet either. So yeah, don't force it. Just kind of like envision it and breathe. <laughs> yeah, I know what it's supposed to. Be. How do you watch people's videos doing this? They get here and they fold all the way forward with it. It's like, mm -hmm. someday. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale, release. And normally they do vinyasas in between almost every pose. So for What's that? like the vinyasas, the yeah. half sun salutation in between every pose. Could you imagine that right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you practice these often? Um, I do this like a few times a week, yeah, I do. Uh, it is, there's something they say to do it every day, like six days a week and rest on Sundays, but what I've found with Ashtanga, especially when you're kind of like, I don't know, whenever your body has weird limits, like you try to do it six days a week, you'll hurt yourself. Yeah, so you just want to do it at your pace. Yeah, which I have a... It's called Vinyasa? No, this is Ashtanga. I, ha I have a couple videos of it up on YouTube. So okay, I'll look at it. I'll send you links. Um, it's all pretty simple. I plan on like eventually getting where I can do full primary, but a lot of like people force that really early and then like horror stories of hip issues and knee injuries and things like that because it is like super bendy yoga, but you don't get there overnight. Right. <laughs> so Mitachasana. A, we're just bringing that left foot or that left knee in towards the chest. And then we're inhaling, the left arm goes up, exhale, have it come down and the shoulder kind of like meets the shin. And then if you can, reach around with that left arm and reach your opposite arm behind your back. So you want that arm up here, if you can, and then around, yeah. Which <laughs> this is also kind of an awkward pose, but... And then inhale, come up, extend that left leg, pull the right leg in, inhale, right arm up, exhale, fold forward, reaching that right arm on the inside of the leg, and then around, and if you can, grip your fingers behind your back, great. So I'm bendy in certain ways, in other ways I'm not. I also have the benefit of being um, lean, which makes a huge difference with like things like this. No, whenever I was uh, thinner, I could do more, I feel like. Yeah. So that's why I'm never gonna thin down. You'll get there. And inhale, come up. And now exhale, you're gonna extend that right leg, pull that left knee in towards the chest, and then pull that right foot onto your right, or your left hip. So this is what it's gonna look like if you can get there. If not, don't force it, just bring that foot underneath and then pull that, and that, that's good for now. All right. Like this is, you know, doing anything with the half lotus, it's something that it puts a lot of pressure on the knee, so you want to ease into it. If you feel any resistance at all, just don't do it. <laughs> and then we're gonna inhale, left arm goes up, exhale, reaching down around and trying to get that bind behind your back. Breathing. Inhale, coming up, and we'll switch. <laughs> yep. 
that's good for now. And then the right arm up, exhale, bring it in front and then back around. Inhale, coming up, release. Extend that right leg, keep the left knee in towards the chest, and then in, bring the left arm behind you, inhale, right arm goes up, exhale, twist towards the left, sit bones stay grounded, spines erect. switching which knee is towards the chest and this time again it'll be doing that half lotus so you can just bring the foot underneath you if you need to so the left knee's in towards the chest right foot is more like a cross-legged you'll get there yeah. and bring the left arm behind you inhale right arm up exhale twist towards the left which just may feel really awkward that's pretty natural it feels super awkward for me too doing weird things with their body, which ideally with this eventually you get to the point where you can wrap this arm around and then actually bind it behind your spine, which is, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, I at least like to practice this more than, like I'd like to do it at least a couple times a week, just to uh, get myself into it. Yeah, well, so I'm working on my teacher training for it, so I'm gonna release and reverse. I just like, I started the teacher training and I've had so many things get in my way, I haven't been able to finish it yet. So it's like I'm not completely confident teaching it yet because it's so many transitions and it's like a lot of poses that can hurt people. And I'm just like, ooh. It's more intimidating than, you know, teaching people to meditate. It's like, whatever, we're starting to cry. <laughs> you know? But your body is okay, like. Yeah. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, twist to the right. If you need to, you just grab the knee. We're not forcing anything here. Inhale, come to the center. Exhale, releasing and bringing just our sit bones into the ground, our feet out a ways. Bring our hands to the outsides of the knees, relax the shoulders, lift the legs up and lean back a little bit. We're balancing on our tailbone. Really activate the core, feel strong in the stomach. And release. One more time. with our feet flat. I haven't actually taught this part to anybody yet, <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> and bringing your hands in front of your shoulders on the ground, palms down, if you can, can you get here? And then as we inhale, we're gonna really engage our quads, engage our core, and press. Oh, I do this all the time. Actually, my favorite yeah, release for a moment, coming down, take a few breaths. Do 
one more round. I like it too. It's super hard for me for some reason. That's only an easy one for me. <laughs> Everybody's different, man. <laughs> What's easy for me is hell for you, vice versa right. sometimes. And it's just... so what's fun about like teaching this is I really get to explore people's bodies with them and watch them suffer and not suffer simultaneously. Yeah. I used to do physical therapy for my backs and they taught me a lot of stretches for my back. Alright, so palms in and press ourselves up again. Release. Get out of the knees in towards the chest, rock side to side a few times. And then kick your knees towards your face, rock back, walk forward, extend the legs out, Paschimottanasana. Just find a comfortable forward fold. Out. 
we're bringing ourselves up on our elbows, and then the top of our head on the ground behind us, the heart opens and breathe. Yeah. Out. And coming back down, tops of the head on the ground, then lift the arms up, grab opposite palms, and then lift the legs up about 10, 12 inches off the ground and breathe. See so if you can press your lower back, or lower back into the ground here, really engage your core. You should be shaking like hell. And release. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm going to skip the next one because it's headstand and I highly doubt that. Uh, I can do a little bit, but not a lot of it. Headstand? Yeah. yeah it's kind of one of those things. I can do like half. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, to do it properly, you have to top of the head in the ground and grip underneath your head, press in the elbows. Start to like walk your legs in. What I do is I do it if I do it on the wall. Because the wall helps. Like there's no weight at all on my head right now. So you're just all the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the weights on my hands and my shoulders. <laughs> Which, I mean, it takes a while to get there. It's a lot of core strength. It's really like, um, doing it against the wall is great, but you just want to make sure that you're not like compressing your neck and that's the real danger there, you know? And a lot of the times, like, I don't know, if you really want to like get good at headstand, then sometimes we'll just like work on headstand like for most of a class. Because okay. <laughs> it takes quite a bit of really pointed attention to actually activate the proper muscles to get there. Like yeah. it took me like, probably two months of trying before I actually did it correctly. You know, I was just like, ugh, a good part of that is I didn't really have a solid teacher. I was learning online, and you know, it's, that is a thing. Yeah, I have an advantage for sure. So, come cross-legged. If you can do lotus, great. If you can't, great. If you can do half lotus, great. If you can do no lotus, great. And here it wants a bind, which I can only do the half bind, man. If you can reach around and grab the toes of one arm or one foot, oh, I'm almost there. Side try. I can only do one leg at a time, which is okay. If you can't do that, just bring your arms behind your back. And chin into the chest, really extending the back of the neck. Breathe. Up. And then we'll fold forward. Up, 
And if you're in Marching Lotus, you can lift the whole body up, but if not, it's just going to be your hips. Full Lotus is both feet on the top. Yeah. And release. So it's one of those things that took me a few years of practice to actually be able to do it. Even then, I can't hold it very long because, man, it's one of those things. If you force something like that, all it's going to do is rip your connective tissue to pieces, and we don't want that. So we'll come lying all the way down on our backs for Shavasana, the most important pose. Let's make yourself big on the mat, but arms should only be within you know, a foot of the hips. Just wiggle around, get as comfortable as you can. Feel yourself grounding. We're gonna do a quick body scan. So I'm going to say a part of your body and just repeat it mentally and visualize it. We'll start on the right side. Right big toe. Second toe. Third toe. Fourth toe. Fifth toe. Sole of the right foot. Top of the right foot. Right ankle calf muscle, shin, right knee, right thigh, right hip, buttock, right side body, right abdomen, right chest, right spine, Armpit, shoulder, right upper arm, elbow, forearm, wrist, back of the right hand, palm of the right hand, right hand thumb, second finger, third finger, Fourth finger, fifth finger, the whole right arm, the whole right leg. We go to the left, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe sole of the left foot, top of the left foot, left ankle, calf muscle, shin, knee, left thigh, left hip, buttock, left side body, left abdomen, Left chest, left of spine, armpit, shoulder, left upper arm, elbow, forearm, wrist, back of the left hand, palm of the left hand, left hand thumb, Index finger, ring finger, metal finger, pinky, the whole left arm, the whole left leg, both legs, both arms, the whole abdomen, the whole chest. Whole front body, base of the spine, mid spine, upper spine, neck, the whole spine, back of the head, crown of the head, eyebrow center, 
nose, lips, throat, heart center, solar plexus, navel center, perineum, navel center, solar plexus, heart center, throat, eyebrow center, your whole body, your whole body, your whole body. Chest, wrap your arms around them, gently rock side to side. And come center, lift the head up, kick the knees towards the face, rock back, rock forward, and come up to sit. Perfect timing. That was so weird. <laughs> that was weird? It was just weird because, like, I could feel my like, energy being active, kind of like when we were doing the other poses, and then like when you did the body scan, like it just like, like you said, grounded me, but it just like all that extra energy just kind of like settled. Cool, yeah, that's the point. That's why Shavasana is extremely important. A lot of people will skip it, but it's the most important. Then you're like high strung, and yeah. just like, Cause yeah, you gotta, like, not centered. It's essentially a absorption. It's like taking what we practice and then letting your body actually process it. Whenever you don't take the time to relax, you know, it's, then your body just kind of, like, yeah, it stays in a hyper, like, vigilant mode. It's not necessary. So we're going to do a quick meditation. Um, this is the happy, healthy, holy breath. Let's bring our ring finger and thumb tip together, or you can have your thumb over the nail. This is active, passive as tips. Always with mudras, we have a tendency to want to press in. It can just be a light touch. We get the same thing there. What does it mean, active and passive? Active is just stimulating a little bit more energy. Passive is just less. So here we're going to be eyes closed. And then inhaling, holding the breath, and mentally vibrating. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Three times. And then we'll chant it out loud. So we'll start chanting it out loud once, just so you get the rhythm. And then we will start to inhale, hold, repeat. So inhale to begin. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Hold, repeat mentally. Happy. 
happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I, happy am I, healthy am I, holy am I. Just breathe. Bring your palms together and breath them. I'll do the closing mantra. Starts and ends with an own though, so you can get that much. <laughs> Heart center, inhale. Svasti prajabya pada palanyantam nyayayena marjena mahima mahisa mahisa go brahmanabya subhamastu nicham loka samasta sukino bhavantu Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Also know that we have a Patreon and we are accepting supporters. The lowest tier is $5 that keeps things like this being made, helps support this path, this studio, these teachers. Thank you for watching.